welcome to the next lecture in electric circuit analysis this will be the first lecture after introduction where we are going to discuss the basic components and electric circuits so before that we will focus on our discussion on the system of units in the past mostly commonly used systems were the english system and the metric system so what are the english system and metric system that are used in the past first let us see that so generally the english system is based on the single standard and the metric system is subdivided into two interrelated standard that is the mks system and the cgs system so mks and the cgs system are the two systems that are formed from the metric system whereas the english system is based on the single standard now the mks system and cgs system have got their name from the mks system and cgs system have been given the name based on their full form so mks terms include meter kilograms and second whereas the cgs system include the centimeters grams and second so these are of different units that form the metric system which contains the mks and the cgs system there was always a necessary for a standard set of units to be adopted by all nations that has become increasingly obvious that is the reason instead of following the english system or the metric system we have come across a system in 1960 that was given by the international bureau of weights and measures in france and the system is known as the international system of units which in france is known as systemate international the units which has the international abbreviation as si so whenever we say si unit it means that this is the international system of units now if we compare the various system of units like the english system and the metric system will have the mks system and the cgs system and the international system of units so for the length it will have a different unit for the english system that is the yard whereas the mks system will have meter and cgs system will have centimeter si system will have meter in generally the si system the length will have meter the weight will be given in kilograms the force will be given in newton the temperature will be given in kelvin the energy will be given in joule and the time will be given in second so generally we follow the si units which are meter kilogram newton kelvin joule and second whereas in the mks system and the cgs system these unit may be vary right like in the cgs system the length is given in centimeter the weight is given in gram the force is given in dyne the temperature is given in centigrade and the energy is given in dyne centimeter or in arg similarly the time is given in second this is also for the english system as well as the mks system so in order to deal with different type of system it is always better to have one single unit of system that is the international system of unit which is followed by all different countries so if we understand the unit there are basically seven si base units so seven si base units are so the time is given in second the weight is given in kg the amount of substance is given in mole the luminous intensity is given in candela the temperature is given in kelvin the current is given in ampere and the meter length is given in meter so these are the seven fundamental base units upon which other type of units are based upon now electrical units if we compare the physical quantity which their unit and symbol so we have current voltage power resistance capacitance inductance 
frequency, period, charge and conductance. So these are the typical physical electrical quantities. So if you see their unit, the current will have a unit ampere, the voltage will have a unit volt, power will have a unit watt, the resistance will have a unit ohm, capacitance will have a unit farad, inductance will have a unit henry, frequency will have an unit hertz, period will have an unit second, charge will have a unit coulomb and conductance will have a unit Siemens. So conductance basically is the inverse of the resistance. So here uh, we can see the measuring device also. So ampere meter is used to measure the current, volt meter is used to, used to measure the voltage, power meter is used to measure the power, ohm meter is used to measure the resistance, capacitance meter is used to measure the capacitance, inductance meter is used to measure the inductance. In generally we have something called LCR meter which is used to measure the inductance, capacitance and resistance. Oscilloscope can measure the frequency and the period. Charge meter can measure the charge and conductivity measure can measure the conductance. So different electrical quantities can be measured by different devices and have the different units as well as the different symbol. Now these unit name or the units of the electrical quantities basically depend on some base quantities. So these seven base quantities whatever we have defined that will be used to have the unit of the electrical quantities like volt which is having a symbol V we can write the in terms of the base equivalent as kg meter square second minus 3 ampere minus 1. Similarly watt can be written as kg meter square second minus 3. So we can see that different electrical quantities can be written in terms of these base quantities. So the base quantities are very important. Now if we compare the various units of the fundamental quantities that is the length, temperature, force, mass and energy. So if we see the length which are, can be defined in different systems that is the MKS system, CGS system or the SI systems and they have the relationship between them. So if we say one yard it is equal to 0 0.914 meter which is equal to 3 feet and in SI unit 1 meter is the length which is measured uh, for the uh, length. Similarly for the mass if we see 1 kilogram will be equal to 1000 gram. Similarly, one slug will be equal to 14.6 kg. So, if we compare the force, force can be given in terms of pound. So, one pound is equal to 4.45 uh, newtons. One newton is equal to uh, 1 lakh dimes. So, uh, 10 lakhs dimes. So, here in this way, we can convert from one unit to the other. Like in temperature, we can have in Fahrenheit, Celsius, or Kelvin. So there is a definite relationship by conversion of the temperature from one unit to other. So degree Fahrenheit can be written as 9 by uh, 5 degree centigrade plus 32 degree whereas the conversion from Fahrenheit to degree centigrade can be also possible. Kelvin is equal to 273.15 plus degree centigrade. So when the temperature is given in one unit uh, we can convert into some other unit. He, here the energy can be mentioned in terms of the joule or some other units. So we should have a clear understanding of the units and how do we convert one unit into the other. So generally in electrical sciences we require the power of 10. So why do we require the power of 10 that we let us understand. The relative magnitude of the various units of measurement we can be very very large or can be very very small and this will be frequently encountered. So whenever we are measuring something it can be very large quantity or it can be very small quantities and this type of measurement will generally encounter. So in such and certain cases there will be a huge difficulty in operations. So to ease that difficulty of mathematical operations with number that can be due to the varying size powers of 10 are usually employed. 
So what are the different power of 10 that are given for the SI units? So if you see the power of 10 in the positive sense, so we can have 10 plus n or we can have 10 minus n. So we can have anything. So when we go from the positive side, so 10 to the power 0 will always be equal to 1. So anything power raised to 0 is equal to 1. So taking the reference as 10 to the power 0, if we go from the higher side, so 10 to the power 1 that is 10 is known as the deca. 10 to the power 2 is known as hecto. 10 to the power 3 is known as kilo. So this is one important unit that is when we say kilogram, so it is basically equal to 10 to the power 3 related to it. Similarly, mega is equal to 10 to the power 6, giga is equal to 10 to the power 9, tera is equal to 10 to the power 12, peta 10 to the power 15, exa 10 to the power 18, zeta 10 to the power 21 and yota is 10 to the power 24. So these are basically on the positive side. So if we have on the negative side, taking the reference from 10 to the power 0 which is 1, we can have uh, deci, uh, centi that is 10 to the power minus 1 and 10 to the power minus 2, milli 10 to the power minus 3, micro 10 to the power minus 6. So we can see that we can have 10 to the power minus 6 or 10 to the power plus 6. So when plus 6 we are using, it is basically we are dealing with mega. Whereas when minus 6 we are dealing, it is micro. So if we have 10 to the power minus 9, it is nano. 10 to the power minus 12, we have pico. 10 to the power minus 15, we have hemto. 10 to the power minus 18, we have ato. 10 to the power minus 21, we have jepto. And 10 to the power minus 24, we have octo. So in this way, a big number or a small number can be written in the power of 10. Now it is uh, very wise how to count and convert in the power of 10. Suppose we take this number. So this number is basically 10,000. So we have, uh, this is a positive number. So which, the number which is uh, greater than 1. So here we have 4 zeros. So we can write 10 to the power 4 that is count number of zeros. So when we want to convert any number in the power of 10, then in that case, if the number is greater than 1, then you count the number of zeros. So if you count the number of zeros here, we have 4 zeros. So here we will have power 10 to the power 4. However, if the number is less than 1, then uh, you count the number of zeros. So here you have 4 zeros. So on the uh, scaling, you have zeros plus 1. So the sign will be 10 to the power minus. So it will be have a minus sign because it is less than 1. This value is less than 1. And here you have 4 zeros. So 4 plus 1, it will be giving you 10 to the power minus 5. So in this way, a big number or a small number can be converted in the power of 10. And there is a definite uh, relation that if you have 10 to the power n is equal to 1 by 10 to the power uh, minus n. So you have a positive or a negative depending upon the inverse of that particular number. Now some arithmetic operations we will be looking for the power of 10. The first one is addition and subtraction. If there are two numbers, so and we need, we need to find the addition or subtraction of the two numbers which are including the power of 10. So if the common power is there that is 10 to the power n, we can take that to be common and we can take the other part to be common. So here we will be having a plus minus b. So if it is an addition, we have to give plus sign. If there is a subtraction, we have to give a minus sign. Similarly, if we are going for the multiplication of the number, so we take two numbers which are multiplied and there are two powers of 10, then we can simply add the powers n plus m to the base of 10 and we can multiply the remaining numbers that is a into b. So this is multiplication. Now if we have division of the two numbers 1 divided by 2, then we take the power of 10 
in such a way that we take the subtraction of the numerator minus denominator power. So we have n minus m and we divide the other part of the number. Similarly, if we want to raise the power, then a into 10 to the power n to the power m. So we take the 10 outside. So here we will be having a multiplication of the power n into m and we will be taking the power of the remaining part of the number a to the power m. So in this way, we can perform the basic arithmetic operation of the power of 10. Now, generally, in uh, when we are using computers or calculator, the, there are different ways by which a number is written. So number can be written in the form of a fixed point, floating point, scientific or engineering notation. We will try to understand what is the difference. So if powers of 10 are not employed, so if we are not including the power of 10, they can be written in the form of a fixed point or floating point. So fixed point and floating point do not require the power of 10. The fixed point format requires that the decimal point appear in the same place each time. So when we are going for a fixed point, our decimal point will be appearing every time at the same place. So at the same place, it has to be there. Whereas in the floating point format, the decimal point can vary its location defined by the number to be displayed. So that is the difference between a fixed point and the floating point. So let us take one example of the fixed point with a degree of accuracy of the thousand place accuracy. So we can see that there are three numbers we have taken 1 by 3, 1 by 16 and 2300 by 2. So in these numbers if we observe that when we convert into decimal places and since we have a thousand place of accuracy each time we are taking the three digits after the decimal places. So after the decimal places we are taking three digits. So that is the thousand place of accuracy for the fixed point. However, for the same floating point format, we can have a number of digits after the decimal and that is variable. So here we have not taken any point after the decimal. Here we have taken four points after the decimal and here we have taken so many points after the decimal. So fixed point and floating point are not including the power of 10 and they can have a different decimal point after the decimal or different points after the decimal. Whereas when we are going for the scientific notation or the engineering notation, so scientific notations are known as the standard notation and these notations will include the power of 10 having some restrictions on the mentisa. Mentisa means the multiplier and the scaling factor that is the power of the 10. So scientific and engineering notations will have the power of 10. Scientific notations require that the decimal point appear directly after the first digit greater than or equal to 1 but less than 10. So when we go for scientific notation, so let us take an example and try to understand. When we have a scientific notation, it can be written in the form of a fixed or the floating point format. But there is a restriction that here uh, the number has to be in between 1 to 10. So here 1 by 3, there will be only one decimal point before, before the decimal point there will be only one digit. So here we can see that since 2300 by 10 will cross the value of the 10, we have kept only one point before the decimal. And after the decimal, it can have the different points. And there it will be written in the form of e to the power minus 1, e to the power minus 2 or e to the power plus 3. So when we write 10 to the power n, it is basically equivalent to e n plus n. So if it is minus, then we can take minus. Similarly, in engineering notations, so this is all about scientific notations. If we go about engineering notations, then it specify that all power of 10 must be the multiple of 3. So we do not take any other power. So here we have taken e to the power minus 1, e to the power minus 2 and e3, different powers of 10. 
but in engineering notations we do not take that it is generally occur in the multiple of 3 multiple of 3 means we can have 3 6 9 and so on so the same number we can represent in the form e to the power minus 3 format and in the multiple of 3 you can see it and we can represent this in both fixed point format or the floating point format but the power should be always in the multiple of 3 so here the, uh, in scientific notation the power can be of any uh, power it did not to be in the power of 3 it can be in the power of 1 2 or 3 but there should be only one point uh, before the uh, decimal so that is the difference between a scientific notation and engineering notations so we have seen different type of ways by which a number can be written it can be written in the fixed point, point floating point it can be written in the form of a scientific notations or the engineering notations so generally in electric circuit we have to solve the numericals so in order to solve any type of numerical a general flow chart we have to obey so for a successful problem solving strategies what rule we have to follow is that read the problem statement slowly and carefully so this is the first step you have to read the problem very slowly and carefully then you identify the goal of the problem what we need to find that is the goal then you collect the known information so here we have the known data or the given data what are the data given to us then you devise a plan devise a plan means what techniques we can use to implement the uh, system then you construct an appropriate set of equations so here from mathematics will start because electric circuit analysis will require a lot of mathematics so we will be appropriate set of equations we will have to design because that will solve the problem and then you determine if additional information is required if additional information is required then again you go back and collect the known information so whatever the data is given to you you again and again check so that the appropriate equations can be formed then you attempt a solution so once you have attempted a solution then you verify whether the solution is reasonable or expected or not if it is not given then you go back again in the sixth step and determine what information is there if you follow this algorithm then obviously any type of problem can be solved so in electric circuit in the next lecture on we are going to focus purely on the electric circuit what are the component to be used how the electric circuit are formed and what are the different laws and theorems are to be obeyed to solve the circuit so see you in the next lecture thank you for now